call this uh, meeting of the Ames Parks and Recreation Commission um, for Thursday, October 22nd, or October 20th, to order. <laughs> um, first item on the agenda is to approve the meeting minutes from September 15th, 2022. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Okay, uh, motion is on the table um, to approve the meeting minutes from September 15th. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, the motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is a public forum uh, for uh, items not on the agenda. Um, I have one speaker card here from Richard. If you would <coughs> come to the podium and state your name and address um, for the minutes. My name is Richard Dale, 5058 Street Apartment, number two. Can you I say it well, again for the for the minutes? Oh. Just say your address again. Oh, I, um, I was a volunteer doorman at City Hall until COVID happened, and they gave me a no trespassing order to be there. And it's like I, somewhat of a nudist, say, is, my teacher says, please let us be naked. And so I took off my clothes, and they gave me a no trespassing order for a whole year. It ended last month, I mean, two months ago. And I don't know whether I can be a doorman here or not. The police told me that I should talk to them, I mean, um, a week or two beforehand. And all I got was a bunch of threats from them saying it's like, um, we can always give you a no, another no trespassing order for a whole year or two. And it's like, I, <coughs> uh, the, they didn't even have the people that wrote that memo. Um, Corey, uh, I can't think of his last name. It's in the backpack, but it's like he, he. I don't know. I I think that if I had a space where I could be naked, other than I can't even be naked in my own apartment when I'm the only one in it. And the police have knocked on my door and ordered me to put my clothes on. They had some bad news to tell me, and I kept telling them, "Keep your bad news to yourself and let me." And they set and slammed the door in their face, and they knocked on it again, and. Um, they said, put your clothes on or we're not going to tell you this bad news. And it's like, I don't have a phone or a computer. And one of my brothers had died. My sister was trying to get a hold of me to tell me that. And she called the police and they gave me my address. And it's like, I opened the door that way. And it's like, I can't even be, it's like when my mother died, the police knocked on my door too. And it's like, I just taken a bath and it's like, I yelled out, who is it before I open you and open the door? And, and the police said it was them. And it was like, <sighs> you know. Uh, so Richard, is there any action you're requesting of the Parks and Recreation Commission? Um, otherwise we don't usually I mean, this is concerning City Hall, which is not directly under the purview. The, the Parks and Rec Commission does concern overseas the things at City Hall. The city auditorium, sort of. Well, but I mean, it's like they told me I couldn't even go to the concerts at the city auditorium. So this no trespass order is between you and Brian Phillips and the police department is my understanding. Have you discussed with Brian Phillips again, or? I tried to write the American Civil Liberties Union to see if they would represent me in the court case and represent me for the city. And it's like, they didn't even answer my letters. Um, they were my letter I wrote in one letter, it was a long letter, you know. Is, and, there, is there a specific request you have of the commission? Well, you know, I like to be naked. I know other people like to be naked. I have the petition that says, we the undersigned honor the rights, duties, and responsibilities of those who wear no clothes as a public expression of their rights, duties, and responsibilities. I've got over 40 pages of signatures to that declaration of mine. Uh, and it's like, I know I'm not the only one that likes to be naked, but it's like, I'm the most vocal person that, I mean, there used to be a church in, in Ames, and it's like, they throw me out of 
churches in, in this town saying it's like oh, there's a reason why people don't go to their church. And, so and, I'd ask you, Richard, if there's a specific request that you would have for us to refer to staff. You know, uh, I mean, we don't never, really have any governance over this no trespass order. So I don't know if you've. If I mean, you, when I'm asking people to spend a day with me, sunrise to sunset, so I could get to know them, they could get to know me, we could build the world a better place one day at a time, you know, and it's like, I, I have buttons that say, live the best day ever, you know, and it's like I asked you, just tell me the best day you ever had, the worst day you ever had, and the difference between the two of them, and it's like, I want to talk about some of the things I'm sorry, this has been a challenging time for you, Richard, but um, thank you for sharing your concerns with us. Um, and I hope that you can find some resolution um, with city staff regarding the no trespass order. So thank you. Uh, is anyone else here to speak on the public forum? All right, um, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public forum. Uh, next item on the agenda is a staff report regarding the Furman Aquatic Center for the 2022 season. So we have uh, Jill Burt, who's our aquatics manager, and Nate Peets, who's a recreation manager, um, who both do different portions of managing the Furman Aquatic Center. So I'll turn it over to them and let them kind of give you the highlights of the, the season. Um, so... We saw during the kind of off season between 21 and 22, um, we repaired a leak in the Lazy River. We installed variable frequency drives on uh, the pool pumps, um, which help reduce the chemical and electrical outputs. So that was a um, long-term uh, help. The splash pool play structure and beaver slide were also restored during the off season and came back and added some more brightness to the facility. Um, one big change was with the closing of municipal indoor pool, we needed to find a way for evening swim lessons, which we felt was very important to families that work and are unable to come in the mornings. And just to continue offering enough, um, try to offer enough swim lessons for the community. So. What we ended up doing was closing at 6 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, adding water walking, and then having some twilight swims every other Monday. Um, both the, really all of those events, the water walking, the swim lessons in the evening, and the twilight open swims were well received. Um, so the um, staffing continues to be a challenge. Um, one added layer to that was certification classes that are normally held every weekend, March through May, had to be relocated. So we needed to rent space um, from Iowa State at the Forker Pool. And then additional classes were delayed until Furman was operational. Um, applications were also slower to come in, so needed to do some additional recruitment efforts. Um, including no cost for certification, increase to wages, and a premium of a dollar, added dollar an hour per staff on the weekend per hour. Um, this was something that really almost every aquatic center saw throughout the state and nation. Um, a lot of pools were changing hours, changing, um, you know, closing for an entire day sometimes um, throughout the summer to try to condense their staff to have things open um, and really focus on, of course, the safety of the facility when it's open. Um, one trend that we've noticed in um, the last few years, but really um, this year I took a look at it and I don't know, Joshua, is it possible to pull that graph up from the report? Did it, if not, that's okay. Um, but we do have about half of our staff ended up working. Um, I looked at June 19th through July 30th um, at hours worked per week for, um, for staff. And it was about 50% of the staff were working up to 10 hours a week. Um, and it really, it's very few people these 
um, these past few summers have been wanting to work 40 hours a week. Um, so we're not only having fewer applications come in, but we're also having, having to replace um, higher numbers of staff because it may be two people working the same that one was working. Um, staff are really expressing the desire for flexible work schedules. Um, lifeguards are traditionally high achievers that are very involved in sports and other ex extracurriculars and academics. Um, so really vying for time. Um, so that's something that we are trying to work on. How do we, um, how do we find staff that are able to work more hours, but also be accommodating? Um, so that is a trend that we're watching and trying to, um, trying to tackle. There was some discussion uh, early in the summer about Ames High offering a lifeguard certification as a PE credit. Again, has that been discussed again now that the pool's done and open? <laughs> yeah. So, so I had some some conversation with uh, Steve Johns, who's the principal, and and he seemed to to be receptive to that idea. So, so we have asked uh, to meet to discuss, and we're just waiting for a response. Um, and if we can, if we can get the, something together and, and have a, a class starting for second semester, that's what we'll we'll do. So, that's great. Um, so over the course of the entire summer, we did employ 103 lifeguards, 47 47 <coughs> instructors, 11 shift leaders on the deck side. 17 water slide attendants, which is, um, I think, about 11 more than we've had any other summer. So that was fantastic. And I had lifeguard. So pass over to Nate. Yep. So I uh, manage the admissions and concession side of things there. Uh, as far as staffing on that side, um, we had 19 total cashiers. We had four shift leaders and then also kind of one head shift leader there. So that was that's a pretty, pretty average year for admissions and concessions. Uh, as far as attendance went, we had just under uh, 79,000 patrons throughout the year. Um, we also did hit our millionth customer on June 8th there. So um, the Jamie and the family was presented a little prize package from uh, Jack's. They had a cooler. A fairway provided a $100 gift card um, with some summer treats in it. And then also they received a free season pass for the 2023 season. As far as, you know, attendance numbers, uh, it was just under that uh, 79,000, but as far as a five-year average goes, it's about 80,600. So with kind of our adjusted hours due to swim lessons and stuff, yes, attendance was lower, but that was part because we had to shut down a little earlier for, for the swim lessons to accommodate with that. <clears throat> as far as kind of the payments and um, how over the past uh, five years, the different payment types, we did see a little decrease in daily admissions, um, but our punch card passes and our season passes did go up there too. So um, as far as also with season passes, we do offer like an end of the season discount uh, starting in August there. So it is a reduced rate, about 30% of the original price. Uh, we did sell 49 of those, uh, which we thought was, was pretty good. Last year it was 55. So we think it's, it's a good um, season pass thing that we want to con continue for the future. We recommend doing that. As far as concessions, um, we did have to adjust the hours at the concession stand too with the, uh, the, the swim lessons. So on Monday and Wednesdays, concessions was open from 1 to 5.30 there. And then um, every other day of the week, it was open from 1 to 7.30. Uh, so the staff, they're cross-trained to do both admissions and concessions just in case we get in a bind, um, just so they know uh, what to do uh, in both areas. Uh, but the total sales was $93,341, which is well above the average in, uh, within the last five years there. Right. Um, this year we had, besides the Rock the Block swim meet, we had 39.5 hours of private rental. Um, that was down a little bit compared to last year's record of 47 rental hours, but above the five-year average, um, which was 35 rental hours. Um, so those do continue to be um, in demand. 
Rock the Block swim meet, we held again the first weekend of June with the adaptations that we made last year of the swim meet running and then the public hours after that on Saturday and Sunday and not competing for space. Um, and again, that was successful and we look forward um, to continuing that in the future. After a couple years um, of hiatus because of COVID, um, we had our annual special events make a reappearance with the princess pool party, the superhero pool party, and conquer the current. Um, so those were all fun events to bring back. As always, we did a season end survey. We had 328 responses, generally um, favorable and positive towards um, facility conditions and operations, staff demeanor and performance. Um, there were some nice quotes in the, the survey as well, um, just highlighting a couple. Um, the end of season pass option was pointed out by a, a few people that it really made sense for their family and they enjoyed having that option. Um, staffing was tough. I know you did your best. We appreciate the frequent face Facebook communication with updates. Thank you for being kind and attentive um, to our preschool group that attended throughout the summer. Uh, we regard Furman as the jewel of the community. Lifeguards are attentive and quick to respond in emergencies, which we saw a few of. <coughs> um, overall, a superb facility, room for all types of users without anybody feeling confined. Um, and then finally, um, I'll end with thank you for not sacrificing safety for profit. So even though people may be frustrated with the hours and changes, there were a lot of comments throughout um, that recognized the tough situation that we were in and expressed appreciation for, um, for the facility and what we were able to do. Great. Any Nothing else for me. Any questions for, for Jill or Nate? What? With yeah, if maybe if you have it up, just to, I, I mean, it, I knew that that was the trend of it, but it was surprising to me to see. With the 79,000 patrons, were those individuals or were those the number of visits? Like, could some of those people be? <coughs> yeah, numbers or? of visits. So, like, we have some lap swimmers that are there five days a week. Okay. So, it's, yeah, each visit. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, here's just the average hours per week worked um where i was talking about like the zero to nine um that was almost i think it was 52 percent um and so yeah you can see it you know the decrease in the 35 to 40 hours a week um is really a pretty pretty small portion of the staff um, um can't like so I worked at Sioux Falls City Pools for a summer and we got a, like a retroactive bonus at the end of the summer if we stayed. So like we had to work 40 hours a week. Like I was the, the pool cashier. And we It was a smaller pool. It was an aquatic center. But then as long as you stayed through – the end of the summer, the end of the summer being when you had to return to school, not necessarily Labor Day, and then you got a retroactive, like, I don't remember what, it, I think it was like, well, and this was 2001, so I think it was like 75 cents an hour or something like for all hours worked in the summer. So I'm just wondering if <clears throat> there's any you know, retroactive incentives like that, that you can say, if you average 20 hours a week throughout the summer, then at the end of the summer, we'll give you a dollar extra per hour for every hour that you worked or something. You know, that's a way, I know you have to have like a, an upfront attractive pay rate, but like, a, you know, as a kind of a retention bonus to encourage people to be there more. Right. Yeah, I think that's definitely something that we need to dig into on what will um, what will get people yeah. more engaged. Um, I've kind of had a unofficial rule of we want people to work at least 15 <coughs> hours a week. 
Um, so some of it with the trade board, it's very fluid. So some of those people were, you know, scheduled more. There's some weather cancellations, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so there is a variety of factors that play into that. But it's, um, yeah, going to be a lot of talking to staff, too, to see um, – their vantage, viewpoints on why they're working the number of hours they are and, and trying to work through some solutions. Yeah. I think one thing that we always have to, to look at and, and we have conversations, even when we're looking at um, increasing wages, you know, per hour and, and so on is, is are we increasing the number of people that give us more hours or um, uh, entice more people to work? Or are we just winding up adding a, an extra expense? Yeah. You know, so, so that's one of the things when we look at, at these things that we always have to, to, to take a look at and we try to, to balance it. Um, because if you look at, you know, just say there's 10, 20, 30, say, say there's 30% of our staff are working 20 hours or more. Um, and we go back and, and we give them uh, uh, what you suggested, a, a dollar more, and it doesn't increase that number from 30% to 40% or to 50%, um, then, then does it really help us? Yeah. Um, so, so that's one of the conversations when we look at this. Um, you know, it's, uh, we're always looking for different ways, Jill. Um, and Nate have done um, some things at the end of the season, little incentive programs that if you work from August 1st to, to September to Labor Day, um, different things, you know, can do. We've tried uh, increasing wages, $2 per hour, you know, for, uh, for, for that. So there are a number of things that we've done and, and we will continue to have those conversations. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that, you know, anything we do, there is a, an expense and we need to make sure that if we're incurring that extra expense, what is the, the benefit that, uh, that we're receiving? So, so th those are just some things that we need to continue to look at. Yeah. I would point out too, with, um, even though we're seeing the trends of the fewer hours this year, we did have an easier time with staff wanting to stay through Labor Day, more staff, um, continuing to pick up shifts and, um, trying to, trying to help out as long as they could. I think that, um, staff attitudes stayed much more positive through Labor Day this year, um, than, uh, than last year for sure. Yeah. It just seems like that less than 10 hours a week, even if you can get those people to like 12 to 15 hours right. a week, it would be a big it's one. such a huge fraction of the total staff that that would be a lot of extra hours. I guess they were really mean about staffing in Sioux Falls. <laughs> 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 I had to work. I worked four days on two days off all summer. So. Yeah. And I think one complexity <laughs> of Furman is that we have hours from yeah. 5 a.m. So it's hard to say, yeah, like, this is your schedule. We do have a lot of students that take classes. So flexibility yeah. has always been something we have tried to offer. Um, but it seems more and more um, tougher to manage the, yeah. all the, the requests. So. Good. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you both for a successful season, even despite challenges, <laughs> always, always tough, but you guys are doing great. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Nate. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is a motion approving uh, dog park fees for 2023. Joshua. So annually we have to look at our fees for – Every one of our programs, and you know, one of them is the dog park, which um, the fees are approved uh, in November be or October, November, so they can be um, so people can buy permits starting in, in December. One new thing this year is that we're adding access control to the entry gates of the dog park. One of the things that we have noticed and we're getting complaints about is unauthorized entries into the park uh, from animal control and from park users. And it's become an issue that um, we put some money. It's become been such an issue that we put money in our uh, 
um, in our budget to add these controls. And those will be active starting January 1. The, the thing is with this is it's an extra dollar per month. So you're going to users are going to see an extra increase or they're going to see an increase in their dog park fees. Um, basically, it's to cover the cost of, uh, of this system. Uh, so if you buy an annual pass, it's going to be an extra $12 a year. Um, and then uh, if you buy a six month pass, it'd be $6. It's, so it's $1 per month per pass. So, um, you know, the, the, the amount of permits that were sold last year or yeah, sold this year, excuse me, 763 is a little, bit, a little bit higher than last year. Last year we had around 620 right around there. Yeah. So we are seeing an increase in that, which is really, which, which is really healthy. It's a quality amenity. People really enjoy it. It's one of the only areas that people can legally, uh, it is the only area in town as far as public space where people can legally run their dogs without a leash. So um, it's very important. Um, it's very important for the park system. So um, staff recommends alternative number one. All right. Uh, is there any discussion or anyone care to make a motion? I'll move alternative one. Second. All right, uh, motion on the table is to approve alternative one, which is the proposed uh, dog park <clears throat> fees for 2023 as stated above. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, it's a great amenity and um, I have also heard feedback from community members that they have a desire for the controlled entry. So I think that's a great um, addition, so. Um, all right. Uh, all in favor of approving alternative one, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, the motion carries. Uh, next item. <coughs> next item on the agenda, Jeremy. Struggling, Jeremy. Oh my God. The rag I need. <laughs> I need like a lot of allergy medication. <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the um, an update on the capital improvements plan. Yeah. So, so normally, what we do is when we get to October, um, we bring you uh, kind of a, a draft plan, and and I am here to tell you that we do not have a draft plan to today. And and one of the things is well, there, there's really two two items. One is is we have a lot of things going on um, within the, the department and big things. Um, you know, just uh, trying to, with the Fitch Family Indoor Aquatic Center and with the plaza and other, other things. So taking up a, a lot of our time, but one of the things that we're really finding, um, this is a second component, is is that it's a uh, it's difficult trying to to nail down what the cost of these projects are going to to be uh, just with the uh, with the indoor aquatic center you know talking with uh, with story construction you know they're seeing right now uh, they normally give a, an increase for labor you know at the end of the the year um, right now they what they did this year is they gave a three percent increase mid-year and and uh, across the industry, they're looking at probably seven to ten percent um, annually for increase. So so there's been a lot of different things that we've been seeing. You know, the it's been the the steel you know delay, and then it's electrical, and then it's uh, you know fill in the the blank. Uh, but now it's labor. So so what we want to do is we really want to to try to to bring something to you that is is as accurate as possible. And, and as accurate as a, a forecast five years out or two years out or, or even one year out, you know, can be. So, um, so, so that's where we're, where we're at right now. Um, um, and we're taking in what you said at the last meeting with the commissioners, uh, you know, kind of directed us, you know, the, the safety, the maintenance, make those the priorities. So we're, we're trying to do that. So um, what we will do is we will have um, a, a draft for you to, to review at the, the November meeting. So it just delayed one one month, but we'll bring that to you in November. So any questions? Keith, one of the things uh, I was listening to um, somebody from over in Nevada and they said that what they did for their field house was purchase some of the items like bricks, some of the steel ahead of time. So you can leave bricks outside for a couple of years. Yeah. So you actually needed them, and they were purchasing things at a whole lot cheaper price, 
as they were watching the escalations go up. Is that something that we've discussed over here on some of our projects to kind of hedge our our cost on these things? So um, we have we have talked about um, purchasing things um, if, if we can, but in some cases with uh, with some of the projects that we have, we don't know if we're going to do bricks or precast or or something else. Um, it, it's hard to to um, to to order, you know, things that we don't quite know what they are going to be. Now, with the indoor aquatic center, one of the things that we have talked about, and and we could even use the, um, you know, the downtown plaza a little bit. You know, as soon as uh, you know the contract was awarded, you know there was conversation about, all right, we know we're going to do precast, um, so let's get those ordered. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be something else, so let's get that ordered. You know, um, we had that meeting I mentioned to you in September. We had the meeting with Story Construction and RDG regarding the the indoor aquatic center. You know, and there are some items that as soon as we get uh, awarded and uh, the contracts get awarded, you know, there will be some things that we may have to do, you know, especially from an electrical side. You know, there, there are some things that are a year to 18 months out, you know, so, so we'll have to, to, and not, not we as a whole, but the, the architects and story construction are going to have to tell us Hey, these items are way out, so let's get them. We we know this is what we're going to need, so let's get them ordered. Um, some of it is supply issues, um, but but if we can do some of that, um, you know, we will we will try to do that. But in some cases, we don't even have it designed to to know what to order. So so that's one of the the, the issues. But but it's a good comment, you know. And they said they saved quite a bit. Yeah. Because they were ready to go and they started buying things knowing that it would be because they they were fundraising still. I know we had a little bit of fundraising left as well. Right. And some other changes. But once they got their project designed, they just start buying things. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and there is a, you know, there are some things that are that are settling down, you know, a little bit. And I could just mention labor's going up, but uh, but some of the other things are starting to to level off a little bit. And and there is some encouragement. Um, but uh, we'll just have to see once we get it out to you know to to, to bid. Um, I was just looking at something from from our national association, and um, there were they were doing, uh, and this was in South Carolina, so it's not the Midwest, but but they had shared that they had a, an, an estimate for a soccer complex of three point five million dollars. They bid it, and it came in at five point seven. <laughs> You know, um, how many bathrooms in that place? <laughs> <laughs> well, they they had they had one they had one uh, one project, and I, f- I forget what it was, but uh, the estimate was fifty thousand, and it came in at eighty five. Um, so, and then there was and there was a third one. I don't remember um, the details of, of that, but um, but it's it's just uh, it's just crazy. It's a uh, it's it's just a, a climate that we haven't seen. And, and we we're trying, you know, normally like with the pool painting, you know, we did that last year and, and we bid it out in the spring, which for a fall painting. And, and it came in with almost three times more than what it, it than what it was seven years ago when we had it done or, or six years ago. So we're actually looking to, to get that out this fall and see if we can get it out earlier and see if we can get more people to uh, to bid the project because we're looking at you know almost a year ahead of time, so so that's something that we're we're seeing a, a lot more as as well, and giving giving contractors more time to to complete the the project. So so a lot of variables, and that's all you know um, coming into to play. But yeah, we'll we'll do whatever we can to try to 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 keep costs down, save costs save money by doing what you had suggested if we can. Um, so, you know, we'll be back in November. <laughs> I am, can't wait. <laughs> now, now, I don't know if uh, um, the Sean Rocks, you have, is this what you were here for, for CIP or? Yeah. 
Okay. So, um, yeah, and, and as always, you know, Becky, if you have specific questions, you can always call me too. Yes, yes, yep. So. All right. Um, any other discussion on the CIP? Um, next item on the agenda is uh, a variety of uh, project updates. Yeah. So the first one, the Fitch Family Indoor Aquatic Center. So we have been working with, uh, with RDG and Story Construction. Um, we're getting really close to, to finalizing those contracts. And, and uh, uh, right now we feel pretty confident we'll be taking those to City Council November 8th um, uh, at, the, at that council meeting. And, and then also uh, we just received the, you know, the offer to, to buy yesterday from the DOT. So we just have to, to review that. I'm um, looking to, to close on, the, on the, that purchase January 4th of 2023. And um, so, so those, are, those are a couple things with, uh, uh, with the Indoor Aquatic Center you know, that, uh, that we're looking at. So just a, a couple of updates on, uh, on dates and where we're at with the contracts. So any questions? That's really where we're focused right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, with it, uh, the the next one with the the purchase of the the Sands McDormand property. So uh, with that, you know, like we had mentioned uh, previously, we had submitted a, a resource enhancement and protection act through the Iowa DR REAP grant, and uh, and we were notified last week that we did receive uh, you know two hundred thousand dollar award, and then. Um, kind of a caveat with that of the, the 30 plus uh, applications that were submitted in the three different categories, small, medium, and large towns, um, our application did um, score number one. Um, so, so I do want to say thank you to, to Joshua, Susan Guiazda, who's our public information officer, and then Lisa Hine with the uh, Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation you know, for their uh, assistance in getting that uh, submitted. So, so thank you to good job to all. Yeah, yeah. yep. And now uh, we're we're looking we, ahead to, we had a big to part in that as well. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, Susan, and I had we did our part, but Keith and Lisa did the bulk of it. So awesome. Yeah. So great. So so now we're looking at other um, other projects uh, or other grant you know opportunities. I should say that. Uh, uh, meeting with a representative of Ames Chamber uh, next week, and we're actually looking to to put a, a cat grant application to, together for the indoor aquatic center. Um, we're pretty confident we get five hundred thousand um, potentially. Program? It's not for like cats. Uh, cat. Um, it would be for building. Cat is uh, is community attraction and tourism. Oh, nice. Uh, is uh, sorry about that. <laughs> so community attraction and tourism, but. Uh, um, but we're hoping that we could get a five hundred thousand dollar grant um, and and uh, use that for the the aquatic center. Uh, there is a land and water conservation fund grant that's also through the administered through the Iowa DNR. So we're looking to to uh, do that for potentially uh, the purchasing of the Sands McDormand property as well. And um, uh, and one of the things I have met with the owners and gone through a few things, we're trying to get the purchase agreement to, together. So just finalizing some, some items, getting their, our hands on some, some things. Uh, but right now it looks like uh, we were trying to get that done this year. The owners have asked to do a, a closing date of April 30th. Um, so, so that's what we'll probably do. Not a rush for us to, to, to get it done any sooner. And, and really what we want to make sure is that that they can have time to, to, to get everything out of the buildings. They maybe want to do an estate sale, like to get all that stuff done before, you know, we close. And then once it's ours, it's, it's ours. Um, we will also be meeting with the, with the farmer um, right now uh, with Iowa law. Uh, you have to notify if you're leasing um, farmland to somebody. You have to notify them by September 1st uh, that uh, that they aren't going to farm next year. We've missed that date, so so most likely the farmer will continue to to farm that next year. But we'll be meeting with uh, um, with uh, with that farmer and having conversation, and 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 uh, we have discussed maybe do it even longer 
um, for a while until we, until at least we know um, what our plan is, how we're going to phase this, where the funding is going to come from, and, and so on. So at least we're bringing in a little bit of, of money. Um, one of the things, there is some land that uh, part of it is in the, um, the conservation resource program. Is that what the yep. CRP stands for? Yep. Um, so, uh, and we have told the owners that conservation reserve, Sorry. conservation reserve. Thank you. Program. So we have told the owners that, uh, even though a municipality can have land in the conservation reserve program, uh, there's really no incentives for us. The private owners can get some dollars back and we could get some dollars back, but, uh, uh, the amount of, the amount of land that is owned by federal, state, and local um, entities, you know, already. There's only $50,000 that uh, is allotted to um, federally, state, and locally owned CRP land, and, and that gets eaten up every year. So with us being a new, um, new entity, we, they basically told us we're never going to see anything. So, so we told the, the owners that they needed to – um, to end that contract, you know, take care of everything before we uh, close on the property as well. So that's a, a, an additional piece of information. So any questions on, on that? Still exciting. I've been getting a lot of, a lot of comments that people are loving that we're going to be able to put a, put a, put a park out there and, um, and just, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to do some neat things. So. Has the family asked to name it after them? They have not. Okay. Nope. Nope. No. And that's one of the things is once we get through this um, and we have a, a little bit more of an idea of, of what's going to be in the park, we have those, uh, those public meetings, uh, we get some, a, a site plan put together. Then what we'll be doing also is we'll be going out and, and doing uh, probably a campaign for naming opportunities and fundraising to help with the uh, um, uh, funding, you know, any improvements that uh, and park development that happen. So, and there's a, you know, potential for additional REAP grants. Um, we've done some bridges in the park system that were funded through REAP. There's uh, other grant opportunities and obviously some, some naming opportunities as well. So, so we'll do what we can, see what kind of money we can find, all right? I know where there's some gold. <laughs> let, let us know. Okay. In your vault <laughs> at the bank. <laughs> so uh, ADA audit and transition plan, you know, with that project. And we've mentioned uh, we had uh, uh, WT Group has come in and, and Courtney has been um, spearheading that project for us, working with the WT Group. So I know you just want to give uh, an update on upcoming public input and, and so on? Sure. So um, as part of the process, they've come out and done um, ADA access audits um, within all the parks and facilities under Parks and Recreation purview. So now as they've completed those um, evaluations and they're developing those site reports, um, before they go into the transition plan um, to outline different methods and strategies for us to, to achieve and to achieve those those um, you know barriers that they identified, um, they hold public input sessions, which is actually a requirement of Title II, um, to provide community input um, on what they believe different priorities um, should be. Um, so as the transition plan is development developed, we can take that information and apply um, within our strategies. So next week we'll be holding three um, public feedback sessions where um, the public will just get an overview of what uh, the WT group has, has been brought on board um, to, to do for the department. Um, and then also just, you know, as a public input session, provide, provide their input. Um, so those meetings will be held um, next week. Um, all three will be held at the library at the Barrel Auditorium. And they'll, there'll be two on Wednesday, October 26th, um, one at uh, 2 p.m. and one at 6 p.m. And, um, then the next one will be on Thursday, October 27th at 10 a.m. Um, the one on Wednesday um, at 6 p.m. will be a 
a hybrid option. So if people can't make it in person, all three will be in person, but we will have a, have a virtual option for that, that Wednesday evening meeting. And for all three meetings, we also will have a sign language interpreter there to sign um, if that is a needed amenity for somebody to come and participate. Um, if people can't attend any of those three meetings, um, my email is available um, for people to email their, their comments and feedback um, as well. And we have received some some feedback already. I forwarded one um, email to you, you know, with the with the response, just so you have an idea of of some of you know what we're doing, and and that's in conversation with the WT group, and they're looking to you know where we're we're non-compliant um, with uh, with items, uh, but but they have told us that there are a lot of good things, you know, that uh, that we're doing within the the park system. Uh, making making uh, playgrounds accessible and and uh, and some of the other things that uh, that we have done and and there will be um, with these meetings they will be showing some of the deficiencies but they'll also you know hopefully show some uh, some pictures that will show what we have done to correct some of these deficiencies so so not a uh, necessarily a, a doom and gloom you know, type of uh, presentation that, hey, there are a lot of good things happening, but, you know, there are still some some things that we need to, to, to do. And and I think through it all, I think the WT group has uh, shared with <coughs> us um, that um, that there's, there's a, a number of departments that don't do anything and, and taking a proactive approach and, and getting this done and moving forward and, and having a transition plan, which could be eight to, to 11 years, you know, with the priorities and so on to, to get accomplished. Um, uh, they, 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 they do appreciate everything that, uh, that we're doing and, and think we're on the right track. Any questions for Courtney on, on that? Okay, then the, the last one, um, near and dear to Jeremy's heart with, uh, with the Eagles. Yes. So, um, you know, we, we shared this with you. We had mentioned the last meeting we met with the Public Art Commission and then the last group that we wanted to meet with, which we did in early October, is the Friends of Ada Hayden. All three groups, you know, obviously loved uh, the sculptures. Um, they, they had questions about, uh, you know, the placement. You know, should they be uh, to, together? Should they be separate? Actually, uh, Paul Shaw. He did come back and, and he feels that uh, those two sculptures should be separated, um, still in the same area, but um, they would both be on, on a, a concrete pedestal or a pillar. I think you're getting me, your, your allergies are coming over this way, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing um, is caring. But, but, uh, um, but looking at it, so, so everybody was very positive about it. Um, questions in regards to lighting, you know, do we, do we light it in some way? Um, vandalism was a concern with, uh, with all three groups, uh, make it uh, to look as natural as possible. Um, the friends group, which I would expect them to, to bring this forward. Um, can we look at something other than wisteria, um, something more native, um, type of, of plant. So that was something that they wanted to, um, to, to see as well. So, so the next step is getting together with, uh, with Paul and uh, working out these details and then uh, see if we can put together a timeline for, for getting this uh, accomplished. So any questions on that? Can you talk a little bit about what's going on with Brookside? Yeah. Um, so, so with Brookside, you know, we've, uh, um, we've had Liz Calhoun, you know, and, and Cesar have come in and talked about the, the project. And again, this is doing some uh, some bank restoration, stream bank restoration, rerouting the, the stream bank through Brookside Park. As of right now, the one of the the things we were hoping to have Liz back at this meeting um, to to give an update. And, and they were uh, a public input session was planned for earlier this month. Um, that didn't happen. They're still uh, doing some, some work on the plans. And, and once uh, the, the plans are, are finalized, uh, there are a couple of meetings, specific meetings, like with the Friends of Brookside um, that need to, to happen to get some, some public input. 
uh, still want that public input meeting. But once that's all done, then we will come back and and share all that information with you. We didn't do we didn't want to kind of piecemeal it. Say, hey, here's a little bit, and then come back a little bit. So so we'll come back at a future meeting, maybe in December. Um, it might be after the first of the year, but then uh, we'll share feedback from the public and and the final plans and and let you know a timeline for everything. So so that's where we're at with it. Anything to add, Joshua? No. Are they going to do any prep work this winter to get some of the mess out of the stream right now? Because there's been more trees falling in it, I see. I would like them to do that, um, but we don't. They, I don't know yet. I, I keep. They, I think they're pushing to try to get it out. I think they're pushing to try to get it. The project started by January, but they're going to have to hurry to get it out for bid and everything. So, because again, any any trees that come down, there's only a window of what October first to uh, March thirtieth. March thirtieth. Yeah. So, so any trees that come down, otherwise it's a bat breeding season. Mm -hmm. And you know, we can't take take any trees down after that. Now we can take hazardous trees down and 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 things of that sort if uh, if we notice them. But to go and do clear cutting or uh, we we can't do that. So 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 with it and and I'm going to guess if uh, with some of that, Dwayne too. Um, obviously, once uh, somebody mobilizes, you know they want to get in there, mobilize, take care of everything all at once, and then they're out. Um, so. So that's that's probably something that they're they're looking at as as well, but, but we can ask that question. Hmm. All right. Any other questions, Ricky? Uh, two more smaller project updates is next item on the agenda. Yeah. So Josh was working on uh, getting our administrative <coughs> office building sited. So yeah. So right personally. There. I'm sorry. You personally are out there with the hammer. I'm working on the, the working with the contractor. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the siding on the building is what 30, 40 years old, probably. Probably. Uh, it's wood board and batten siding. Uh, it's on some of it's very starting to um, cup and curl, and um, and there's been some other revisions to the building that uh, we're gonna with this new siding uh, job. Uh, we're gonna. It's going to look all one, like one unit, all one pieces, you know, all uh, one style of siding. Uh, the bid came in at 57000 or a little over 57000 We have $50,000 in the in the budget. Um, there are some savings of some a couple other projects where we'll be able to get this done, uh, hopefully get it done early next spring, and then we can uh, have that building uh, last, last uh, a long time for us. Good. Yeah. And then um, pickleball courts. At uh, at McCarthy Lee uh, project, so so we uh, did have that. Uh, we do have that bid out. Those are due next week Wednesday, so we'll find out at uh, I think one thirty or two o'clock. I think it's two o'clock. Uh, we'll open bids and see where where they come in at. So um, the, for this part of the project, I think the engineer's estimate was just under a hundred thousand, and uh, we'll see what uh, see where they come. Come in at seven million so, dollars. Yes. <laughs> or two bathrooms. So, so yeah, so so um and I know you're very excited to see where, where they come in at. So is this and then like with this uh, this is like do you like sit down at a certain time? Yeah, yep. You like, do really yeah, yeah. Do you yep. like broadcast it's like or? bid opening. I want to see yeah, it. Yeah, two two o'clock. We're two thirty five. Yeah, next Wednesday. Come and join us. Yeah. I've it's fun when you get a bunch of contractors in the room that they're competing for the same job and they're, it's really quiet. <laughs> Nobody's talking. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> this really happens. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Two my big opening was less. It was just me and with the purchasing guy. Envelopes, so. yeah, I'm, I'm free. I'm here. So, so yeah. So, so that, uh, you know, that will be, uh, yeah, next Wednesday and, and we'll see where, where things come in at. So hopefully, hopefully then, um, what we would do is on the uh, first meeting in November, November eighth. Um, hopefully we can award a contract, and then there too, this is another project we're we're bidding it now, and we're giving them until June thirtieth of next year to to finish the project. So giving them a lot of time. 
So you're very generous. Yeah. <laughs> well, just in this environment, we we find already as a governmental agency, we pay more <clears throat> for, for projects. Oh, yeah. And uh, and if we start squeezing them, uh, trying to get them into a small window of time, then they just uh, you know crank up the the price more. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's the the truth. Exactly so, true. So. So that's it on, on on those. So, all right. Any other questions for Keith? Uh, next item on the agenda is a monthly report. Joshua Courtney. Um, bathrooms are going to be shut down starting next week. Um, just unfortunate it's that time of year. Um, in regards to the wetland dredging project at Ada Hayden, the contract is expected to be completed early next week, which is great. We've had some. Good weather for them to be able to do that. I wish it was more wet around here, but I'm glad they were able to get that done. Um, so that'll be nice. Um, it's pretty amazing when you go out to the site and see how much soil has filled in that wetland and it's done its job. Um, I mean, Keith and I were out there the other day and there was one spot where they had to, you know, we were on top of this area and they had to go down another, it had to go down eight feet. So it, it filled up quite a bit. Um, so it's good to get that done and get it back to what it was uh, originally designed. Cool. With the ice arena picking up and going out of the summer season, going into to fall and winter, um, had some maintenance items completed in there. Um, we had a company ads on boards um, come in and do a complete board and glass cleaning in addition to some of our staff doing some work. So if you go in there, it uh, seems like some nice new fresh boards. So go catch it now. So with the activities picking <laughs> up, uh, you might see some, might see some scuffs quickly. Um, Homewood Golf Course um, had uh, 2,886 rounds played in September, which was a few hundred higher than, than last September. So good, good to see some growth there. Um, Aquatic Center, um, you had that report. Um, you can see some of the additional numbers from the past, past really all five years total, obviously 2020 with, with it being closed for COVID, but um, can see even with the, with the schedule changes, um, still good attendance. And, uh, and uh, at Banshell, um, obviously more activities um, with the um, free movie night um, that was held um, on Labor Day weekend, had about 500 community members attend, and then um, a couple additional events. We had uh, the Des Moines Symphony um, actually reach out to us um, with the entrance to, to live stream their opening event um, this year on September 23rd. So that was great work between, between Craig Kaufman, obviously getting the, getting the word out where people can contact us and um, working with IT to be able to make that live stream happen. That's cool. I think one other thing that I would, would add, so so Courtney has been working with uh, with staff and because of, uh, with the pandemic and, and not knowing when we we're gonna have programs and so on, we used to have the printed brochure that we mailed out, you know, 19,000 of them twice a year. So we have gone to digital, you know, brochures and, and Courtney, like I said, has been working with staff and what we had decided, we used to do two. Um, now we are actually gonna go to four. Um, so, so right now, um, staff is working on the, the winter brochure, um, which uh, will be December, January, February. And, and with any of the brochures, what we're looking at doing is having them go live one month ahead of time. So, so the goal is to have this winter brochure um, be live on the website as of November 1st. And then the next one would be, um, you know, March, April, May, and then, you know, June, July, August, and, and then the September, October, November for the, for the fall. And there is going to be some overlap. You know, there will be some things that, um, that, uh, that wind up in, in both brochures, but, um, but really one of the things that we wanted to, to do is because we're going digital, um, if we go to, to four, we can be more responsive and, and it's easier to, to, to get information. Um, whereas in the past, if we did this uh, fall, winter, spring brochure um, or a fall, winter brochure, if we didn't know something, we kind of missed an opportunity. Well, if we don't put it in the fall, hey, we have an opportunity to develop a new program or if a, an opportunity arises, you know, we can still get it into to, to the brochure um, because we have more of them. So, so kudos to to um, Courtney and, and staff and, and getting that accomplished and 
And uh, it's something that we just decided this fall, you know, to, to go to the four of them. And, and uh, so it'll take us a little bit of time, but hopefully the customers, you know, see the, the benefits of, of doing this. And, and we're actually doing two brochures too each, each time. We have one for fitness and wellness, and then we have one for you know, recreation and facilities. Um, so a little bit uh, more target marketed for, for people as well. I don't know anything to add to that, Courtney. I would just say there's obviously a lot of people involved in, in putting that together. And, um, you know, Katie and Val are, are kind of the ringleaders down there as the, as the source of the funnel of information. So um, they're, they're, a huge, they're a huge asset and main reason that thing gets out on time. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Can't wait to see. Any other questions at the end of the season projects? All right, uh, next item on the agenda is commissioner comments. Uh, I just had to laugh a little bit. Um, I think KCCI came to the ribbon cutting for the accessible kayak launch and um, the woman who did the reporting. I mentioned the capital improvements project in my remarks and she put it into her piece and I thought that was like, like a funny bit of nerdery that nobody cares about, but <laughs> so I had to smile that she reported on that. So, so, but great turnout there and at the um, Hera Park um, ribbon cuttings. So just really amazing community support for both projects. So, yeah, I'd have to say those were probably the the two yeah. other than the Miracle attended. Park, yeah. other than other the than Miracle one, Park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. So it was really great. So, but then I had to give a speech in front of people, which was less great. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Any other comments? Uh, our next meeting is uh, Thursday, November 17th at 4 p.m. And I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Meetings adjourned.